there, and thank you so much for joining me for this past week's Fizz and Flow. I had so much fun seeing even a few more familiar faces, but also new faces. It was just so amazing to flow with you guys on Saturday morning. Such a great way to start the weekend and the day. So we're gonna start seated for this practice. And you either can sit crisscross or you can sit kneeling. If you'd like to sit kneeling, you might wanna put a pillow between your sit bones and your heels, and that can also relieve some pressure on the knees. No matter how you choose to sit, I encourage you to bring your hands to the thighs, shoulders down and back, sit up a little taller, and try to straighten out the lower back. Taking moments to breathe, pause. Noticing the rate of your breath and just trying to slow it down. Doesn't need to be any more forceful or any lighter. Just a little longer with each inhale and exhale. Maybe taking a moment to just think to yourself and reflect on what the morning or the earlier part of this day has been. Taking good care of your body with a nod to whatever you've been doing up until now. You've been sitting a lot, just trying to grow a little taller, waking up those posture muscles. You've been resting, maybe allowing that breath to be a little more invigorating. Or if you've been exercising, allowing the breath to just be soothing. Our ujjayi pranayama breath is deep inhales through the nose and exhales through the mouth. And it can be both energizing and collecting as we focus our practice through the breath throughout the rest of class. You might take the hand to the belly or even the heart. So we focus a little deeper on the breath. We'll release all the air out of the mouth. Seal the lips and inhale through the nose for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the mouth, five, four, three, two, one. Take a deep inhale through the nose, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale through the mouth, five, four, three, two, one. Deep inhale through the nose, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, really feeling that belly expand, the longest breath you can muster. Exhale, feeling all the air rush out of the belly. Every inhale, taking it slow, knowing that that next exhale is gonna come. The exhale can be long. Does the cycle continue with the next inhale? As we continue to take our breath at our own pace, I want you to come to an intention for today's practice. An intention that is rooted in your environment, the situation you find yourself in, and special care to what your mind and body need now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday. And taking care of the self we are at this moment and setting a goal or intention that's going to help us find what we need, whether it's more calm, more energy, focus, clearing the mind, or just staying present. Keeping the eyes closed or gently blinking the eyes open, 
We're going to take the shoulders forward and up on an inhale. Back and down on an exhale. Forward and up on an inhale. Back and down on an exhale. Let's take the arms up, sweeping out to the side and up. Inhale. Exhale, out and down. Inhale, out and up. And exhale, out and down. Big inhale, out and up. Pausing to tip on your exhale to the right. Right arm bending in towards the body. Left arm reaching over the head, long neck. Think ear over bicep. Keeping the elbows in line with the body. Stretching long, keeping the left hip down to really elongate the side body. Take a deep inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, tip to the other side. Reaching the right arm overhead, ear over bicep. Left elbow pulling in. So both elbows stay in line with the body. Long neck and right hip stays down. Your next inhale, sweep both arms up. Exhale, twisting left. Taking one arm across the body and the other behind as we sit even taller. If you're sitting crisscrossed, make sure the left knee stays down. Otherwise, it's just the left hip that needs to remain down if you're kneeling. Every inhale, growing a little taller. Every exhale, taking that twist and sinking in. Stay facing this way. Gently release the arms and just walk the arms to the side. It's okay if you're straight side or more on the diagonal. You just melt into the side stretch. Perfectly useful whether or not you're crisscross or kneeling. Arms can be outstretched. You can even take the arms in like ragdoll. Gently beginning to walk the hands to the front either outstretched or ragdoll. And then we'll roll up one vertebrae at a time, dragging the arms in, stacking the lower, middle, and upper back, shoulders roll back. Take a deep inhale, arms up. Twisting the other way, exhale. Sitting tall with every inhale. Every exhale, gently twisting. The right knee stays down if you're sitting crisscross. And the right hip stays down if you're kneeling like me. Focusing on a nice long spine. And then staying facing this direction, just let the arms soften and gently walk them out to the side, either straight side or more in a diagonal. Really stretching the muscles in the right side back. Arms can be outstretched or more like ragdoll, regardless of where your legs are at. Very gently beginning to walk the hands or arms or body forward. And then beginning to drag the arms in. Head is heavy as we roll up one vertebrae at a time. Lower back stacks, then middle, upper, and shoulders. Coming into tabletop next. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Taking a moment to find this position. Toes can be tucked or untucked, but we want to find a right angle in the shoulders, the hips, and the knees. Pointer or middle finger faces forward and gaze between the thumbs for a neutral spine. We might also take a little tuck of the pelvis to feel the length in the lower back and the strength of the lower abs. For cat and cow, take a deep inhale, belly drops, gaze forward. Exhale, pull the belly up, tuck the head in the pelvis. Inhale, belly drops, gaze forward, shoulders broad. Exhale, head and pelvis tuck as the belly comes up into the spine. 
with wide shoulder blades. Inhale, feel the stretch of the belly and the engagement of the back. Exhale, engage the belly and stretch the back. Continue this at your own pace, really including the neck as part of this big spine movement. The cervical spine is the vertebrae of the neck and it's just as important as the rest of the back and spine. You can stay here or you can take big barrel rolls with the chest and the ribs. Maybe choosing to inhale through cat or cow and carving to one side or the other. If you'd like to try dancing lion, it's particularly fun as you take the arms out just slightly and then you can circle the hips side, back, side, and forward at your own pace or take any of these three things we've done, cat and cow, barrel rolls, or dancing lion at your own pace. Making sure to go one way and then the other with whatever you're doing. Beginning to find stillness here. We're gonna end in child's pose. So hips to heels, arms outstretched, head can be down. You might keep the knees together or separate them, dropping the belly between the thighs, taking a moment to pause and come back to your intention. Slow breath. And noticing if your intention has changed. Feel free to adjust now that we've moved a little, come a little more centered. We're powered through and keep it the same. Gently begin to draw the knees onto the body. If you've widened them, hands stay where they are, shoulders over wrists. Gently lift the knees for plank. If you'd prefer to keep knees down, that's more than okay. Just gently begin to find your plank. Spread the shoulder blades far apart and long neck. Gently tuck the pelvis just to lengthen the lower back. We don't want to be over tucked or curved in the spine just elongated. Pressing the floor away with wide fingers. Either the pointer finger or the middle finger points forward. Take a deep inhale as you slide the shoulders over the fingertips. Exhale down through chaturanga. Elbows point back and you move as one unit. It's okay to drop the knees. And then gently inhale through cobra. Hands press down, but it's mostly the strength of the spine that lifts you. Feet, thighs, and pelvis press down. And you can exhale on the next down dog. Passing through tabletop and pedaling out the feet. Even as the feet pedal or kind of sink into your downward dog, make sure the arms are strong, pressing the floor away, ears between the biceps. Let's take that low flow again. Take a deep inhale, plank. <laughs> exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. One more time. Inhale, cobra. <laughs> Plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. And exhale, down dog. Big bend in the knees. Lift the heels on the inhale. Exhale, forward fold, tippy toeing all the way to the top of your mat. Take an extra breath here in ragdoll. Maybe grabbing opposite elbows, feeling free to bend the knees and shake out the head. Very slowly, we're gonna roll up, natural breath here. Hands can release. Beginning to get the tailbone to point downward, so vertical pelvis. Lower back stacks, middle back, upper back, shoulders and head. Take a deep inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit down through chair and hold. Knees tracking over toes. There's a space between your legs keeping really good alignment from the hip to knee to toes. If the feet are together, you can squeeze the midline in with nice even knees and even toes. Pausing here, taking a deep inhale, 
Sweeping the arms out and up. Exhale, bend at the elbows and just look up gently. Little upper back bend. Inhale, get tall. And exhale, folding forward. Take a deep inhale, hinge to stand halfway up. And exhale, fold. Plant the hands, set the feet back, big inhale for plank. And exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. And exhale, down dog. Let's take that flow again. Inhale, bend the knees, lift the heels. Exhale, forward fold, hop, step, or jump to get there. Inhale, hinge up to stand. Exhale, chair. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, really gentle back bend, just lift the gaze. Inhale, tall. And exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale for plank. And exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. And exhale, down dog. Pausing here. Three-legged dog, lift the right foot up. Take a moment to find three-legged dog's proper alignment, which is flex the right foot. Keep the right big toe pointed down. Ears stay between the biceps, pressing the floor away. Now, make the choice to lift the right knee and bend it as you drop the right foot off to the side. Now, the left toes still face forward along with the fingers. We're just opening the right hip. <laughs> Avoid the urge to want to swivel the shoulders. No change in the upper body. It's okay if you want to circle the knee or maybe roll out the ankle. Come back to your three-legged dog nice and slow. Take a deep inhale, maybe lift it an inch higher. Exhale, knee to nose. Stay strong. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, this time stepping it through for runner's lunge. Making sure that the right foot is in line with the knee and the hip and not just under the belly button or the heart. Taking a moment to pause here in runner's lunge. All 10 toes face forward, crown the head reaching. And as you find this pose, kind of pulling the right hip back and the left hip forward so we're not open, but we are really, really square. You might stay here, take a hand to the knee, or even float the fingertips off the mat, maybe barely on the mat. Trying to reduce the urge to just lean on the front leg and instead try to really engage the hamstrings, the core and the crown of the head as it reaches. Taking deep breaths here. Beginning to release for low lunge, left knee down, tuck or untuck the back toes. Begin to bring the hands anywhere that's comfortable, mat, knee, hips, or even straight up. Wherever you choose to be, right toes are nice and flat and rooted into the mat. And this left foot doesn't want to hook under, it wants to be really long. So make sure you're pointing the left toes at the back of your mat and not the side of your mat. You're welcome to stay here. If you'd like to take a little shoulder stretch, Simply bring the hands to clasp behind the body. You might straighten the arms or even pull the fist a little tighter. Just taking a moment to pause. Taking deep inhales for focus and exhale, sinking in. Slowly begin to release the hands for our half split. Move the weight over the back leg. Right foot is long and pointing upward. Check that there's a right ankle in the left knee. And we're just gonna focus on the right hamstring here. If it's hard to hold the ground, you can always reach for just one arm down, sometimes that helps. Or even use any props or furniture around you to give you a hand. Wherever you are, we wanna have a nice long spine and try to melt the chest towards the shin.
beginning to release back into low lunge, stepping on the front foot, tucking the back toes for runner's lunge. Simply step the left foot forward to meet the right. Try not to rock or to wiggle as you do so. Inhale, hinge all the way up to stand. Exhale, sit down into your chair. Inhale, hinge to stand. Exhale, little upper back bend. Inhale, tall. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale for plank. Deep inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale for cobra. And exhale, down dog. Press the floor away. Keep those ears between the biceps as the left foot comes up. First in our three-legged dog. So left toes point down with a flexed ankle. Ears between the biceps. Now, make a really conscious effort to open up the left hip, but keep everything else the same. It's pretty tricky. Left shoulder's got to stay down. No opening or twisting in the upper body, just the lower body. It's okay to want to stretch the hip, circle the knee or the ankle. And then come back into your three-legged dog. Take a deep inhale, lift a little higher. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog, stay strong, big inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. One more time, inhale up. Exhale, knee to nose and step it through. As you do so, make sure to put that foot in line with the hip and the knee, maybe even the shoulder, but not the heart or the belly button. Pausing here, all 10 toes face forward, crown the head reaches. Left hip pulls back, right hip forward. Can be anywhere you need here, both hands down, one hand down, or maybe you float the fingertips to the mat or even off the mat. Really focusing on the strength of the front leg. You can feel that hamstring engage and also the core get longer and stronger. Deep focusing breaths here. Low lunge, we're gonna gently take the right knee down, tuck or untuck the back toes, and then hands wherever you feel is best. Maybe to the knee or the hips or straight up. Wherever they are, check in with this back foot. We want it not to point at the side, but back. Same thing with the left foot, pointing forward. Toes long and flat. Wherever your arms end up, really just melting into this pose. Every lunge, left hip back, right hip forward. If you'd like to take a little shoulder stretch, simply take the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, and then close the fist or string the arms as much as comfortable. With big focusing breaths, with control, you release the hands for half split. Hands down, shift the weight into the back leg so we're kneeling on it. Left leg long, left toes up. And double check that there's a right angle in the back leg. That way you're nice and stable. If it's hard to reach the floor, that's okay. One hand down can help. Utilize any furniture or props. And wherever you are, nice long spine. Low lunge, gently begin to step on that front foot, lift the back knee for runner's lunge, and as smoothly as possible, step the right foot forward to meet the left, forward fold. Inhale, hinge all the way up to stand. Exhale, down through chair. Inhale, all the way up. And exhale, little back bend. Inhale, tall. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. 
gently plant the hands, step the feet back, big inhale, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale for cobra, and exhale, down dog. Bend the knees, lift the heels on an inhale, exhale, forward fold, hop, step, or jump the feet forward. Inhale, hinge to stand. Exhale, hands down through heart center, down into chair. This time, pause here. I'll stand to face you, and as we pause here, if your feet are apart, go ahead and bring them together. So big toes to touch, knees to touch. Sit a little deeper. In this position, we want a really long neck. So I like to gaze instead of forward, slightly downward, maybe about two feet in front of my mat. From here, you're more than welcome to take the hands to the hips or straight forward, no matter what. Really long lower back, no sitting like you're doing a squat or a clean, really long. We're gonna take a twist here, beginning to move our heart to the right side. So the left elbow comes to the right knee, and beginning to take that twist. Your heart center tension can really help move that heart into the center. So don't be afraid with healthy tension to push knee into elbow and then elbow into other knee. Just make sure that the knees don't begin to stagger or shift. We'll gently begin to come back to center. Take a deep inhale, arms up. Exhale right back into it. Let's switch to the other side. Beginning to twist, moving our heart to the left side. Elbow can hook to the outside edge of the knee. And then that healthy tension in heart center can move and help twist. Check in with the knees so that they don't stagger. We really are twisting here. Really strong pose. As we unwind with control, come back center, take a deep inhale, hinge to stand. A little back bend, exhale. Inhale tall, and exhale forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale for plank, step those feet back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, and exhale, down dog. Right foot up, inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to right tricep. Finding a different contact point for the knee. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to left tricep, using the strength of your obliques to do so. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, stepping it through. Crescent pose, keep all 10 toes facing the same direction forward, and hands can come to the knee or straight up. Crescent pose can be as high or as low as you're comfortable, equal parts stretching and strengthening. Really tall here. Wherever the arms are, focusing on belly button and heart pointing forward. Nice dropped tailbone. So we're not leaning forward, we're trying to be upright. Long neck too. Arrow lunge, we're gonna to begin to tip the head forward and reach the arms back. This is just like runner's lunge with fingertips floating off the ground, we're just a bit higher. Don't be afraid to really work the front leg. Strong front body. On your next inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Exhale, warrior two, spin the back heel down and open up the arms. Here in warrior two, we want the right big toe to be visible on the inside of the right leg. Left toes point side or at a diagonal in. Rib cage staying over the pelvis, strong arms parallel to the floor. Let's take a deep inhale, arms up, legs straight. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, get long and tall. Exhale, warrior two. One more time, inhale up. And exhale, warrior two. Peaceful warrior, flip the front hand. Begin to reach it up as the left hand floats down and back. Strong right knee pushes forward. 
And I like to look at my back foot to relieve any pressure in the neck. Making sure this is a side body, not a back bend. Side body stretch. Warrior two on your next inhale, reaching the arms up and out. And then side angle, right elbow to the right knee, left arm up and maybe over the head. Think bicep over ear and get really long here. Gaze anywhere that's comfortable. And if you'd like to bring the right hand down to the mat, that's okay. Otherwise stay right here. It's focusing on squared off shoulders to the side of your mat and squared off hips. On your next inhale, we're gonna come out of it. Inhale that left arm tall, exhale, warrior two. Straighten the front leg for triangle. Begin to slide these right fingers over the foot. And then right hand can land anywhere along the leg or floor that's comfortable. Left hand reaching up nice and tall. Maybe gaze at the left hand for a balance challenge, but wherever you are, finding squareness in the hips and the shoulders. with really gentle control for the right knee. We're gonna to start to bring this left foot down, pass through runner's lunge. So arms can cartwheel down, bend the front leg, all 10 toes face forward for warrior three. We're gonna to begin to put the weight forward into the right foot, lift the left foot. Now, before you think about moving the arms at all, it's okay to bend the right leg and this left toes, they gotta to point downward to keep everything square just like or three-legged dog. As you balance here, you might challenge the arms up, feeling free to use any props or furniture. <laughs> They're there to help. Wherever you are, staying really long, avoiding tension pulling the shoulders up to the ears, pull them back. Now we're gonna see if we can stand up without moving the legs at all. So keep the leg, left leg as it is, and just begin to lift the crown of the head, standing tall eventually. The feet are gonna meet and you're standing up. Nice work, take a deep inhale, arms up. Exhale, chair. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, little back bend. Inhale, up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Big plank, take a deep inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. And exhale, down dog. Left foot up, big inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to left tricep. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to right tricep, using the strength of the obliques. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, stepping it through. Crescent lunge, hands can just float up or they might come to the knee and the hips first. Finding nice square hips to the front of your mat. All 10 toes face forward, really adjusting the depth of this as needed. It's both stretching and strengthening. Thinking about keeping the crown of the head long and tall, belly button and heart forward. You might also think about dropping the pelvis slightly so we're not leaning forward yet. Strong and stable. Arrow lunge. This time we can begin to tip. Crown of the head beginning to move forward, arms sweeping back. Just like when we're floating the fingertips off in our runner's lunge, we wanna really focus on floating and getting long here in our arrow lunge. Long and strong, every inhale with focus, every exhale, just stay strong, you got this. On your next inhale, take the arms all the way up. Exhale, warrior two. Adjust your stance however you need. We should be able to see the left big toe on the inside of the left knee. And this right foot is no more than a right angle. Arms are out. 
We're gonna keep the rib cage over the pelvis. Staying strong here. Let's take a deep inhale, stretch it up, straight arms and straight legs. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stretch it up. And exhale, warrior two. Inhale, stretch it tall. Exhale, warrior two for peaceful warrior. Prepare by flipping the left hand up, beginning to tip up and back. Right hand can trickle along the leg and find that side body stretch. No back bending here, just side body. I like to reach and look for the right foot. Staying strong into the left knee, try not to lose the lunge. And then your next inhale, reach the arms up. And then exhale into your side angle, nice and slow. Left elbow to left knee. It's fine if you want to bring the hand down or just keep contact with elbow and knee. Focusing on squaring off the shoulders and the hips and getting nice and long here. On your next inhale, once you begin to reach the right arm up for warrior two, straighten the front leg and exhale slowly moving towards triangle. Sliding the hips back as we reach the left fingertips forward Left hand down anywhere along the leg, right arm up. Squaring off the shoulders and the hips to the side of your mat. Anywhere that this left hand needs to be is fine, but keep that right arm reaching, really energetically fighting gravity. Engage the core, stay strong, big inhales and exhales. With control, we're going to start bending the front knee for runner's lunge as the hands come down to the ground. Take a moment to pause here as we work into warrior three. We're going to start putting the weight into the front leg, lifting the right leg. Make sure these right toes point down is the hardest part. And it's okay to bend the left leg as much as you need and as much as you're comfortable. From there, you might challenge one hand up and then the other. Really getting long and strong here. Best upside down, capital T. Fighting gravity and staying strong. If you fall out, you get back in, no big deal. <laughs> really breathing here. We're gonna come out of it the same way as we did on the other side. So trying to keep the back leg long, we'll just start lifting the crown of the head to become upright. Really slow and controlled. Take a deep inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit down into chair. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, little back bend. Inhale, tall. And exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Plant the hands for plank, deep inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. And exhale, down dog. Really slowly, we're gonna see if we can keep the arms straight and the legs straight and see if we can tippy toe the feet to the hands. Really slow, we did this at the beginning of class. Maybe it'll feel differently at the end of class. Hanging upside down for a moment. It's okay to walk the hands in and be more in the middle of your mat. And we're gonna take an engaging stretch here. So you can either reach behind the calves and gently pull, or you might try to take hand to foot pose. It can be our peace fingers and hook the big toes, stepping down on the fingers and gently pulling. I recommend elbows back or elbows out, crown of the head really reaching down and forward. You can also take traditional hand to foot pose, which is when you step on the hands, toes to wrist crease. Now, it's okay to bend the knees to do this, maybe bringing the thighs and belly to touch, inserting one hand and the other. And then from here, it doesn't have to be a hamstring stretch. It could actually be a spine stretch. Maybe bending the elbows and pulling down, maybe straightening or bending the legs, finding the optimal combination of bending versus pulling and stretching. Really long neck here, avoid crunching the shoulders up to the ears.
We're going to slowly release our hands if we're in a hand to foot pose or just relax the arms if we reach behind the legs. We're going to start to bring the feet together if they're not already. And we're going to come to a wide knee toe stand. So we're going to bend the knees, hips down, heels up. Now from here, we're going to be into widen the knees. And I actually have to lift up my feet and then change their direction since our mats are not that slidey. <laughs> and we want our heels to point in together, want our toes to point out to the side. Now if you'd prefer to be taking malasana, that's a wide squat and you can be anywhere that you'd like to be. But if you'd like to try something different today, we want to try to draw the feet together and knees out to the side. From here, you might be comfortable taking one hand to the hip, maybe higher, maybe using any furniture as a prop and standing really tall in the upper body. You're really close to the ground, so as far as balancing poses goes, this is really safe. But if you have any pressure in the knees and you'd prefer not to be doing a balance, meet us in cobbler's pose. Standing really tall, crown of the head up. Maybe you bring hands to heart center. Or if you're already there, challenging the arms somewhere else. We're gonna gently come down to cobblers when we're ready, nice and slow. Maybe bringing the knees together and sitting to one side first. Doing so really gently, taking good care of our ankles and toes. So we sit up really tall. We're gonna to mean to place the elbows into the knees and reach the crown of the head forward, long spine. Take a deep inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, maybe fold, even just an inch deeper. Every inhale getting long, every exhale sinking in. You're also welcome to take more ragdoll arms and just relax into the lap or even pull on the feet and let go of the elbows entirely. Holding here. Deep breaths wherever you are. And then we're going to begin to sit up, close the knees. And we're going to make sure we're towards the top of our mat for rolling down. Big toes to touch, knees to touch, bend to knee, Pilates roll down. Go ahead and tuck the pelvis, begin to round through the spine and roll down really slow. Trying to make contact with the lower back before the rib cage. I think that's the hardest challenge. Really, really slowly and controlled. Whenever you're there, reach the arms overhead, get long and stretch out those shoulders. Big breath here. Bridge pose, take the hands down by the hips, palms facing down. We want to get the heels as close to the hips as possible. Take a deep inhale, fill the belly, gaze up. Exhale, lift the hips, press the feet, hands, arms, and shoulders down. Breathing here, nice and slow. Every inhale, lifting those hips. Every exhale, enjoying the stretch. Strong pose here. Deep inhales and exhales. And very slowly, we're going to come down one vertebrae at a time, the upper back, then the middle back, then the lower back and hips. Gently bringing the knees into the chest, maybe even rocking side to side, taking a moment to soften the neck and soften the lower back. Taking a moment to pause here, beginning to stretch long, kind of reach the toes and the hands this time, adjusting yourself on the mat, however you need, really trying to stretch out the body, especially the hip flexors, the abs, the lower back that we just worked in bridge. Maybe flexing and pointing the feet. We're going to take cobblers laying down, so soles the feet together, knees fall out to the side, and then tuck and re-relax the back and the pelvis. Taking hands to the belly as we slow down. Maybe noticing the breath slow down as we come into stillness. No ujjayi here. 
just calm breath, natural and slow. You're welcome to stay here in cobblers. If you'd like to close it up, simply bring the knees together and do the opposite by widening the feet. Alternatively, if there's anything else you'd like to take, like happy baby, or just hugging the knees into the chest, whatever works, feels good to end your practice, do it. Any last movements or stretches as we prepare for Shavasana. whenever you're ready, finding that final resting pose. Traditionally, it's heels, the width of the mat, hands at a similar angle off the mat, or maybe keeping the hands on the belly. Beginning to feel a little heavier in the mat. Toes might fall out to the side with lack of effort in the lower body. The knees and the quads soften, so the legs get a little heavier. Pelvis weighted down. The lower back a little heavier. Shoulders away from the ears. Rib cage weighted downward. Neck long. And arms relaxed. Neck and jaw are unclenched, and all the muscles in the face relax away from the center line. Brow and furrowed. Cheeks relaxed. Feeling a softness over the eyes and the temples, through the hair, over the ears, and down the neck through the shoulders, arms, torso, hips, legs, and toes. Calm and still. Feeling equally relaxed and soft, light and effortless, heavy and relaxed. Finding calmness in the body and equal calmness in the mind. stillness in our thoughts, permission to be quiet and still. can stay here, begin to roll to one side in fetal position. Stacking shoulders, hips and knees, no effort. Just the weight of one side of the body, rolling over to the other. very slowly we'll press the weight into the hands coming to a seated position of your choice feeling the sits bones root down and head grow tall whenever you get there 
hands on the knees and shoulders down. We'll very gently sweep the arms out and up. Exhaling out and down. Take a deep inhale, arms out and up. And exhale out and down. Last time, inhale out and up. Touching palms overhead and exhaling down through heart center. Sealing our practice, self-compassion, self-acceptance for all that we've done on the mat. Comfortable with where we're at and satisfied with who we are today on our mat and off our mat. We'll gently bow forward together saying namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. Great job working hard, and thank you so much for dedicating your time to your practice. And also, thank you so much for dedicating your time to Fizz and Flow. I'm having so much fun doing it on Saturdays, and I can't wait to see y'all again soon. Bye!